Yes. What is up guys, Val here from Cinema 40 Tuts and today we have our first um, Cinema 4D R13 tutorial. Um, I, I just, by the way, I just love this logo. Uh, so much better than the old ones. It just looks so much more high res. Looks a lot nicer as well. Um, anyway, on to Cinema 4D. Um, basically, it's not today's not going to be a tutorial on actually how to make stuff. It's going to be more of a I'm I'm thinking of starting like a kind of series where we slowly build up into more complicated stuff. So we start off right from scratch. So if you're a beginner and you just got Cinema 4D R13, never used any of the others, and somehow managed to um, obtain Cinema 4D R13 um, in some way, um, I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and you want to learn how to use it because you've got no previous knowledge about it. Well, this is this is the channel for you. This is the series for you. Uh, this is the first video of this series. Um, so to start us off, um, I'm going to teach you to how to kind of customize your your layout in Cinema 4D and add these kind of bars here with your favorite tools and. And also kind of teach you about what these different layouts are about here and all about these different um, tools um, and options and all that and basically what's changed in cinema 4d r13 so let's get into it um, yeah basically um, I thought of this first video because I watched a friend's tutorial he's called the Polaroid monkey so I guess there's a shout out to him his name's David um, yeah, um, so I'm kind of boring your tutorial, but anyway, um, I'm also adding a bit of stuff to it. So anyway, let's go. Um, yeah, so let's go to the start startup. This is when you open R13, you will get this. Okay, you'll get the project settings, blank screen, pretty much blank layout. Everything's nothing's happening. So and you wanna you know add add things into it so let's go you go into window customization custom um, customized menus will kinda are basically these things up here um, we're not gonna actually touch those today um, we're gonna go customization customize say customize commands new palette this this will um, allow you to drag and put it anywhere so add some of your favorite tools let's just put mo text for example um, that's one of the basic tools um, move is pretty important even though it's right there um, light uh, target light yeah let's add target light um, you can basically choose any tool whatsoever. Um, let's put uh, bulge, pretty helpful tool. Um, pool. Um, Bezier, no, no, let's just put Bezier. Okay, so these are a few helpful tools that you will kind of get used to using in Cinema 4D. They're pretty simple to use. Um, now, to add the the this kind of palette anywhere, what you what you're gonna want to do is you can see these kind of weird like they've been kind of carved in sort of dots. Just hold click there, and you'll get this arrow, and you get these kind of weird gray lines everywhere. Um, and this is like where you're going to be putting it. So if I put up here, there, as you can see, it's a pretty kind of convenient place because when you add objects, they usually come here. So if you want to, if you have clicked there, and then you can pretty easily go to the move tool and all that, and so go all the way there, and you know, just for convenience. Um, or you can have it down the side. 
there or on the outside of the side and then just pull the screen back over um, or just under it you know basically whatever suits you um, is best uh, that you can make your own decisions um, now if you've got plugins and I'll be I'll quickly show you how to install plugins uh, in a sec um, you can just type the plugin and then bring over here and you can have maybe a, se a separate palette for plugins and just add at the bottom there because um, that's kind of more out of the way and uh, because you know, I don't use these plugins as much as those tools so it's pretty simple you just click that and it pops up instead of going to plugins throwsy throwsy you know all that I've actually only installed one plugin um, comes with two plugins already um, but yeah so um, talking pretty fast today um, but yeah um, yeah uh, now if you're not new to Cinema 4D you'll know that these on the si side it looks kind of different um, just the kind of general logos are different but they all mean the same thing like that that's the point tool um, that's the line tool uh, that's the face tool that's the whole body tool you know um, and that's still the edit editable tool that makes means you can actually select the po those points I was talking about so there or there it's pretty cool stuff so if you're a beginner this you can make some interesting stuff straight away um, yeah um, so yeah that's pretty much the same and snapping um, kind of just basically snaps it to the grid or whatever you want uh, to snap it to um, now it's also at the top you'll get these if you're new to Cinema 4D uh, I'll quickly explain this this is the move tool so you have if you have an object can basically just move it around like this uh, cropping means you can make it bigger smaller instead of going to the actual axis tool um, this is a rotation um, pretty self-explanatory and they've made it a little bit thinner that these axes in R13 which is I don't know why they did it but I think it looks pretty quite clean um, yeah and that's the live selection tool lasso selection and just different ways of selecting your object um, yeah um, this is this is the render out render settings. Um, now your output is depends on your the size of your screen. Mine's the maximum. Well, well it's not actually that one. Mine is two thousand five hundred and sixty. Oops, two thousand five hundred and sixty by fourteen forty. So it's a pretty large screen um, but it's my I've, it's an iMac 27 inch uh, 2011 edition I love it um, yeah now this is the save option where you choose to save your file you can save on your desktop just choose a name um, anti-aliasing is kind of basically the quality of the render um, that's pretty much what it is. Um, stereoscope I have yet to use, so I do not know what it is yet, but I will explain it to you in the next tutorial quickly. Um, these effects are ambient occlusion, caustics. Ambient occlusion is really important. Um, global illumination is important. Depth of field. Um, color mapping those are the ones I use the most so ambient occlusion um, is basically the light um, how bright the ambience is um, so yeah, you can kind of measure that to your liking um, global illumination is just there have been recently kind of in R13 they've made it a lot better it's a lot lot better 
uh, it's brilliant in R13 so really recommend you use it um, I'll be bringing out tutorial on that pretty soon um, depth of field um, yeah kinda adds depth to the back of your image front of your image wherever you want it kinda blurs the back of that part of it out um, color mapping is good uh, kinda I don't really know how to explain it. Um, it kind of it affects the the color displayed on your image and the background. You can choose it whether to affect the background or not. Um, so that, yeah, that's totally up to you. Um, and this new option here, uh, render. Um, this there's a new physical render which has been talked about a lot. Um, and yeah, it's it's supposed to be really good. Um, I'll be experimenting with that and bring some new tutorials out. Um, so yeah, and finally, for again for the beginners of you out there, um, these options up here are called sub menus. Um, pretty much like any program, file, new file, open. You can merge different Cinema 40 files, which is pretty helpful. I'll do it quite a lot. Um, the the classic save as. Um, edit, undo, redo, copy, delete, select all, project info, uh, project settings. So that's actually the, what it, what your project opens with when you start. Now, if you don't, if you don't for some reason don't want to go there and there, you can actually go create object and choose the object. Um, it has everything that everything that is here is basically in, in over here. Uh, yeah pretty self-explanatory uh, selection these are live selection last selection all that stuff um, yeah tools name tool helps kind of label your objects you can use rulers measuring construction tool lighting tools um, yeah uh, animation is pretty um, pretty important in Cinema 4D. Um, I'll quickly show you the uh, actual layout for soon. Render. This is the render set render kind of menu for it. Uh, you can actually. I'll actually just explain it to you using these three. Uh, render settings I already showed you. This is to render render the picture. That's um, actually when you save it. It'll when you want to make make the video or whatever. You just hit that. But you just want if you just want to render on the screen, you just hit this one here. Um, yeah. But obviously, because I added a global illumination stuff, it's not working properly. Uh, I haven't done the options correctly. Um, yeah, MoGraph is extremely helpful. I, I MoGraph is I, I really like MoGraph. Um, yeah, uh, there'll be tutorials on that. It, um, I use quite a lot. Most text, everybody uses it. I'm sure you know how what that is. It's basically just 3D text. So overused. Um, people think they know how to use Cinema 4D by just adding text, but they're wrong. Um, cloner, matrix tool, really helpful tools. Um, effectors are extremely important. Um, Characters, these are kind of pretty advanced stuff for you beginners, so I won't bother explaining this. But basically, it's if like the gamers, game, game, gaming designers use this quite a lot for a joint and tool to make the characters realistic movement. Um, these are plugins, uh, your plugins that you've installed, and yeah. So let's go back to the layouts now. This is a standard layout startup, which we've added this kind of palette, and that's for the tools, and this one's for the plugins, and this is the animation one. And now you guys will be probably like, "Whoa, this is looks completely different to the startup one." Well, it doesn't actually look that much different, to be honest. It's just the startup to the startup one is basically that that. Um, with this on top and that under. The only thing that's added is this kind of advanced timeline. Um, basically this timeline gives you kind of 
more options in your animation because uh, when you're animating you do a lot a lot of keyframe key, key, keyframing and you want to be able to edit them easily um, and this is a perfect way to do that so yeah then there's body paint um, which is a pretty interesting kind of part of Cinema 4D but obviously that's not what I'm teaching you um, I'm actually not too experienced with body paint so I wouldn't bother asking me questions about it <laughs> I wouldn't be able to help you much um, yeah and uh, the, the standard is basically the startup which is the same thing and this is my personal one startup user this is what I made and sa saved uh, by the way to save your 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 um, layout you go to window customization and save layout as and you can save it in your documents or you can just go save a startup layout so it just saves it on the actual program as the startup layout so you don't have to load it every time yep um, then there's visualize which is gives you kind of more kind of specific um, uh, what do you call them tools to your to your work um, it, l it looks I, I, I quite like this kind of setup how they have it um, but yeah um, those are yeah those are aren't really relevant to now and something really important R13 is that they removed this content browser and you're probably like, whoa, where is it? It's, ba it's right here. It's right in the corner. Uh, so much better than that stupid pop-up pop pop that took that took a bit too long to load up. Um, so much better. Uh, you have everything here. You can browse throughout your computer for files. Um, it's absolutely perfect. Um, yeah. And also, if you want, for your palette, you can actually go into the palette options, and I think you can, um, well, you can try change the size of your icons um, over here. Um, but I'm actually looking for something else uh, that kind of shows the name of the uh, the tools. Um, can't actually see it. Oh, there it is there. Um, you go. So if you want to have the name of the tools, you can just go sh right click show text. Now you can actually see the names of the objects of the tools. I mean, uh, which is pretty helpful. Um, you can even have them under it, which is looks pretty nice actually. Um, I'm gonna. I kind of know the names, so I'll just leave them there. But for you beginners, you can actually keep it like that, and you'll quickly learn them. Uh, so you'll kind of be te testing yourself um, without kind of really knowing it, if that makes sense. Because uh, every time you look at it, you'll read the name and all that stuff. So, yeah, this was a quick overview of R13. Um, it's a brilliant program. Uh, I love it. Um, I've been working on some stuff with it, preparing some tutorials. Um, and now if you're watching this on Yash GFX, be sure to um, click on the link in the description and give us a sub. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, which is in the link, which is linked in the description. And subscribe to my personal channel, Fusion Design 1, for more um, variety of program tutorials and speed arts and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.